Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. I hope you enjoyed that really funny intro because I'm pretty sure that chocolate bar is done now. Today's tutorial is going to be on this very dramatic fall look right here and it was done using the Too Faced chocolate bar palette. I cannot believe I didn't pick up this palette sooner or even take a peek at the colors inside because it is so perfect for fall. There's such a great variety of deep plums, warm browns, really beautiful shimmery shades. So you can expect to see me use this palette a lot this season. And if you're interested and want to see how I created this look, then keep on watching. Because this is going to be a little more of a dramatic look and we're going to be using shadows that have glitter and quite a bit of fallout, I'm going to be starting out with the eyes first. To prep the eyes for a shadow, I'm going to apply a little foundation to the lids. I'm going to be using the Makeup Forever Ultra HD in shade Y255. And I'm just going to be applying that foundation with a beauty blender. Using the Smith 112 brush and MAC Mineralized Skin Finish Powder in Light Plus, I'm going to dust some powder around my brows before filling them in. Doing this allows the foundation to set a little before applying product to the brow so there's not as much slip and you get a cleaner finish. So just lightly dust it on, you're not really packing on the powder just yet. And I'm going to be filling in my brows using the Anastasia Brow Powder Duo in Chocolate and Delium Tools brush number 735. Next, I'm going to be using a dark shadow base in order to make the really shimmery metallic shades pop on the eyelid. I'm going to be using the NARS Velvet Shadow Stick in the shade Dark Angel. You can also use any chocolate colored eye pencil for this too. I'm going to be applying the shadow stick really close to the lash line and then blending it out towards the crease using Smith Brush 122. The first shadow I'm going to be using from the chocolate palette is called Gilded Ganache and it's like a really rich golden green shimmery shadow and I'm going to be packing that on right on top of that shadow stick using Smith Brush 235. Next I'm going to take the shadow Milk Chocolate and apply it to my crease to help blend out that shadow using Smith Brush 247. I'm going to use a clean Smith 232 brush to just further blend out that shadow. Using a Smith 230 brush, which is like a smaller version of the Smith 232 brush, I'm going to apply the shadow Triple Fudge to the inner and outer corner of the eye. So we're technically creating a spotlight eye, but not one that is really dramatic. Normally a spotlight eye, the center is really bright, really shiny, really glittery, but this one's going to be more of a subtle spotlight eye. And then just lightly start feathering it in towards the center of the crease. And again, I'm going to use that Smith 232 brush to blend out the shadows. And the reason I'm using this brush versus my typical Sigma E40 brush is because this blending brush is tapered, so I can be a little bit more precise with my blending versus blending the shadows all over.
I love my smoky eyes to be really dramatically smoked out, really cloudy and almost blended out to the brow. But if you don't feel comfortable doing that and you feel like when you do a smoky eye it almost looks like you have two black eyes and it's too dramatic, start by not blending it out so far and just keeping it really tight and near the crease. Don't blow it out so much that you feel uncomfortable wearing it. Definitely start small and then slowly build up to a more blown out, smokier look. And if you start to blend it out and it looks too dramatic or you blend it out too high towards the brow, grab some of that pressed powder and a clean blending brush and use that to tone down the smokiness of the shadow. So just like this. And now that I'm done applying all the eyeshadows to my lids, I'm going to go into complexion. And the reason I'm not working on the lower lash line yet is because I like to wait until there's concealer under there so that the shadow has something to grab onto. So after we're done with complexion, we'll go back and finish the rest of the eyes. To prep my skin for foundation, I'm going to be using the Makeup Forever Step 1 Smoothing Primer. For foundation, I'm using that same one I used around my eyes, the Makeup Forever Ultra HD in the shade Y255. And I'm going to apply that to my skin using a beauty blender. And I haven't had a chance to fully review this foundation with you guys. I know I said I was going to come out with a video on it, but I'm just going to let you guys know about it really quick. Um, I absolutely love this foundation. It's been my go-to. It just looks really clean and flawless on the skin. It really doesn't look like you have any foundation on when you wear it, especially on camera. You can't even tell if you were to zoom in that there's even a trace of foundation on the skin. And I'm also using this foundation today for this look because I'm a really big fan of the semi-matte look for fall versus the really glowy, dewy finish for summer. I'll still do a glowy skin for fall and winter, but sometimes it's nice to be a little semi-matte and not too dewy. It just gives such a different look and feel to the makeup. For my under eye concealer, I'm going to be using the NARS Radiant Creamy Concealer in shades Honey and Vanilla. Again, Honey is going to be a correcting shade, and Vanilla is just a shade lighter than my actual skin tone, so it's going to help to highlight. And then just grab that beauty blender again to blend it out. And I'm going to be using that same MAC Mineralized Skin Finish in the shade Light Plus that I used to set the foundation around my brows to set the concealer. And I'm going to be using also that same brush, the Smith 112 brush. Now that I have set the under eyes with powder, it's okay to go back and finish the eyes. You don't want to start applying eyeshadow on freshly applied wet concealer because that fallout will just really stick to that concealer and it's impossible to get off. So now let's go back and just finish the eyes. I'm going to apply the shadow Milk Chocolate, which is the same one that's in the crease, to the lower lash line using Smith Brush 230. Again, if you don't like your smoky eyes to be that blown out or that dramatic, grab a smaller brush. A great one to use is the one... I really like Morphe's M213 brush because it's so small that you can really be precise when applying your shadow. But me, I like the drama, so I'm going to be using Smith Brush 230 and just really blowing out that shadow along the lower lash line. And as you're blending that shadow on the lower lash line, drag it back up into the crease to make the shadows look really connected. Using that more precise brush I mentioned, the M213, I'm going to apply the shadow Triple Fudge really close to the lower lash line. And then just flip the brush on its side to further blend out that shadow. I'm going to be using Ico's Making Eyes Automatic Gel Liner in the shade Pitch Black to fill in my upper and lower waterline. If you don't feel comfortable going that dark, feel free to not fill in the lower waterline, but definitely tight line to give the base of the lashes a more dramatic look. 
I'm gonna apply a light coat of Too Faced Better Than Sex mascara and then pop on some false lashes. The lashes I'm going to be using are the Ardell Wispies. I like to cut my strip lashes into pieces to kind of customize the way they look and apply them a little more precisely. You don't have to do this, you can apply the full strip. That's just me being me and I like to chop them up into pieces. And while I wait for that glue to dry, I'm going to set my brows using the Anastasia Clear Brow Gel. And of course, I forgot to hit the record button when finishing the rest of my complexion. So I'm just going to run through it with you guys really quickly what I did in order to get what you see right now. Using the Smith 118 brush, I applied the Makeup Forever Pro Bronze Fusion to areas of my face that I wanted to shade and really create a defined bone structure. I'm not really bronzing per se for this look because I want to maintain that feel of the fall and more of a pale skin. The highlight I use is also not that illuminating, it's much more subtle. It's a part of the Hourglass Ambient Lighting Palette and the powder is called Radiant Light. So I used that same brush to apply this highlight to the high points of my face. And then finally the blush I used was Max Pink Cult. I believe this is a pro item, so if you can't find this blush in stores, definitely check a MAC Pro or try finding it online in the pro section as well. Now I can go ahead and finish the look. The lip I decided to use is by LA Splash Cosmetics. It's their Lip Couture Liquid Lipstick in the shade Malevolent. These are the lipsticks from my long-lasting makeup tutorial that I mentioned last a really long time. If you have a problem with the liquid matte lipsticks not wearing for a long period of time on you, these are definitely extremely waterproof, they don't budge, and you definitely need an oil-based makeup remover to get them off. And here you have the final look. I know this is a very dramatic fall-inspired look, so definitely feel free to tailor the look to what suits you best, like picking out a lighter lip color or not smoking out the shadow as much as I like to smoke out my eyeshadow. If you enjoyed this tutorial, make sure to give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe so I see you in the next one. Bye guys.